Welcome to Timeball Games. I'm ELD, here to ask you for help in growing the channel. When we reach 2,500 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a custom leather playmat to one lucky subscriber. So be sure to like and subscribe. All right, welcome to Fast FastFX. Sorry about that, guys. We've got Pyle Souza on Snoko versus Tony on Blue Red Delver. Snoko is definitely going to look to drag this in to the deep stages with a ton of resiliency and card advantage, whereas Blue Red Delver traditionally going to be, of course, the faster of the two strategies. It is worth noting, however, that Blue Red Delver has definitely picked up quite a bit of resiliency with Dreadhorde Arcanus, potentially... Uh, if it's allowed to go unchecked, uh, will generate a ton of card advantage and really, really put a damper on Pyle's plans for attrition. Usually the control deck is going to want to do one-for-one -one trades. Two-for-ones, of course, are always welcome. And here we've got uh, Ponder after a couple of Arkham's Astrolabe. So, so far on turn two, Pyle's going to have literally whatever mana he colors he wants at the cost of uh, having drawn three cards so far this game. He's going to have two off of Astrolabes and one off of Ponder. So those early turns kind of set him up with perfect card advantage and some filtering. And Tony, no early drops here. A brainstorm now for Pyle. And Tony actually t considers Force of Will for a second. I mean, this is a really uh, spell pierce. Absolutely. Perhaps thinking whether or not he'd actually want to Force of Will if the spell pierce were countered. Uh, but that brainstorm, potentially very crucial. If Pyle continues making land drops, it's going to be very bad. Brainstorm in response to this Inquisition. Unlikely a deck like Blue Red Delver can end up with no targets or no, no choices for Inquisition. We got Brainstorm, Ponder, and Stifle. Force of Will plus Wasteland. That Wasteland, so far, not going to have any targets on Pile's side of the board. Now, Tony got back into Legacy after quite a number of years off. Now, True Name Nemesis uh, got back in with Burn, put up some good results, used that to get the cards for Blue Red Delver. Uh, you can also see him play Magic Online. He plays on Twitch under Tony Scaponi, putting up some good results over there. But it is a very different game playing online or Paper Magic. We are all about the paper magic here. A Angarth's Rampage, one of the ways of clearing a True Name Nemesis. True Name, a really difficult card to handle for many decks. Uh, you really do have to make some adjustments. And uh, Snoko here has Angarth's Rampage, Liliana's Triumph. I mean, there, there are actually quite a few cards that can handle it. And you're generally going to feel much better about having cards at the two mana cost than three. Uh, of course, you know, the first time around, much easier to cast, but once you start factoring in Snapcaster Mage or potentially even Colgan's Command to bring back Snapcaster, uh, that extra mana really starts to matter quite a bit. These Snoko lists really have some streamlined answers, and we see another one here with Abrupt Decay taking out this young Pyromancer before any cards are actually played. To generate some value, we've got a Brainstorm. And those tokens are not of zero consequence. A 1-1 one, one in this type of matchup isn't going to necessarily swing the game just by attacking, but the fact that it can stick around and soak up an Edict effect is uh, potentially much bigger than many players would recognize as a card like Angar's Rampage 
really becomes lackluster once you get some 1-1s one on board. Force of Will being revealed, flipping the Delver. And the race is on. Another Delver comes down. This Leovold now supported by a Tarmogoyf. And Leovold's going to be able to turn sideways here pretty fearlessly. Really no downside. And this is going to be a blind flip for Delver unless Tony has an upkeep brainstorm effect. Delver. Oh, and he actually just drew without... I didn't even see him look at it there. Looks like he just went to his draw step. He's got hard cast force, but he is facing down. I'm not sure why that Goif didn't attack. Oh, I see. I got confused. I believe that mountain was being fetched off the top. That was not revealing for Delver. So this goif is still... No. No, I'm totally confused. Tony scooping it up. Let me know how I uh, missed that ending game state. It really looked like that goif missed an attack, which I didn't understand. Ultimately, Oko came down and sealed the deal. Oko is a very, very problematic card for really any Delver strategy, but... Uh, Blue Red Delver post board has access to those pyroblasts, and they are going to be so important to making sure Oko doesn't come down and create any type of value. Even coming down and creating a food and then trading with a pyroblast is so much worse. It effectively blanks a full attack step off of a Delver or a lightning bolt to the face. Oko pulls a ton of weight, and of course, if he's left unchecked, he'll just completely dominate the game. Especially when backed up with Tarmogoyf, those 3-3 three, three Elks, not very scary. I believe it may actually be an Elk that Tarmogoyf is devouring in the artwork of the reprint. I mean, it's almost like they saw it coming. He just stands in the way of those 3-3s three and makes it really untenable to attack. You do have some burn that can potentially finish off the Goyf, but I mean, there are times where Goyf ends up being 7 toughness in this matchup. We see counterbalance being taken out. That's one of those cards that can help Goyf reach unreasonable stats for two mana. Enchantment's going to be the toughest to come by, but there's plenty of creatures, lands, instant sorceries, planeswalkers, and artifacts floating around. All right, skipping over the sideboarding there. Pretty important decisions in between games. As Blue Red Delver does need to set the clock, but also can't get blown out by some of these incredibly efficient answers from Snoko. A basic forest, a basic island being fetched in response, making sure that Stifle doesn't deny this first land drop. As you get deeper into the game, Stifle gets worse and worse, but if you can steal some early land drops, Stifling a fetch land makes a huge difference. Counterbalance, still in there, comes down and sticks. This is a card that's not often seen in Blue-Red Delver. It's certainly not stock, depending on the list that you're looking at, though. It does have its supporters. And in this type of deck, it functions uh, kind of similarly to Stifle in that it's not completely shutting down the entire game. Uh, Tony gets a little bit of information off of Counterbalance, seeing a flooded strand, and now he has a decision to draw it or not on his draw step. He opts to draw it, makes that for his land drop, and then fetches it away to play a true name nemesis with one mana available. Ponder now for Snoko. And Snoko is... 
I would say probably better positioned to handle a true name nemesis than Miracles. Miracles has access to Council's Judgment with one more mana. Uh, and they also have Terminus, but using Terminus to just take care of a single true name nemesis uh, puts a lot of pressure on the rest of the cards in your deck. You really want a, a Terminus to be able to handle a few cards. Get some card advantage out of it. You typically have to set it up. Mystic Sanctuary being fetched uh, just to grab a Brainstorm. Three damage coming in there. I don't know how I feel about that. Let me know what your thoughts are on this Mystic Sanctuary for a Brainstorm play. Feels a little lackluster to me holding those lightning bolts in hand if I saw that correctly. Thought he actually had a couple of bolts. Getting an extra bolt back could actually close the game out. There's also Pyroblast to bring back, which is a very high value card in this matchup. Angar's Rampage. Only one mana left for Pile. Spell Pierce denies it. Oh no, and then he plays his land. Oh, that hurts. Oh no. That is absolutely brutal. Snapcaster into Angar's Rampage. And we got a Stifle on the trigger. Astrolabe is enabling a Pyroblast. However, that's where the mana runs out. He's not going to be able to grab an Angar's Rampage with that Snapcaster. Oh, very interesting. Very, very interesting scenario here. So Lightning Bolt, I'm very curious about that. The Snapcaster trigger does have to actually name a target. He managed to get a ponder out of that. I wonder if Tony jumped the gun there, stifling it, assuming it was going to be Angar's Rampage. The mana wouldn't have worked out, even with that Pyroblast. Um, at that point, he wouldn't have been able to get anything out of the, the Angar's Rampage because he wouldn't have had the black and red mana. Baleful Strix adds to Pyle's board, but does nothing to handle this true name nemesis. He's going to need some type of edict effect, and there's a lightning bolt, and we're on to game number three. Now, that's an important thing to remember uh, with Snapcaster Mage, is they do have to target the card in the graveyard when they put the trigger on the stack. That can lead to some interesting decisions when you're talking about the colors of mana that are available. All right, we are jumping in after some adjustments to game number three. Pile going to be on the play. See Mystic Sanctuary going into Tony's hand. A card that is difficult to evaluate for Delver strategies. Coming into play untapped gives you the upside, obviously, but it's probably at its worst in terms of these early drops where it comes into play tapped. That can be really harmful to this tempo-based strategy, much more so than the control-based decks. A Wasteland takes out the Bayou, and Pyle has that Astrolabe along with the Island Making that silky smooth mana base. It is pretty devastating to be able to turn one astrolabe, turn two another basic land, and then actually like him to Torok. I mean, 
Basic Island turn 1, him to Turok turn 2 just doesn't seem like it should be possible, but Astrolabe makes those type of plays a reality without relying on the dual lands. Giving that mana base a ton of resiliency, but this game, Tony was able to deny some mana with the Wasteland. Looks like another Wasteland floating on top. Delver of Secrets comes down. This one gets Abrupt Decayed, so Fatal Push and Abrupt Decay making short work of these Delvers. And now Tony's going to shuffle away. No longer interested in that Wasteland as Pile didn't make his land drop. We'll see if that ends up being correct. If he draws a dual land, he'd likely rather have another Wasteland on board. A Ponder sets things up. And he's going to be able to leave a one casting cost card on top. Draws the Wasteland. Just like that. Dual land played for turn. Underground Sea not going to be long for this world. But no clock here. Snapcaster Mage. Being played just for the body, Ambush Viper in blue. Tony in no danger of actually losing to this Snapcaster as he does have a Lightning Bolt. Is a worst case measure, but he's got True Name Nemesis and will welcome the race. End Step Brainstorm. And Tony fetches. Uses Mystic Sanctuary. To put Brainstorm on top. Denying Pile that uh, Snapcaster Brainstorm. Yeah, Counterbalance, along with Mystic Sanctuary, does kind of give the card a little bit more of a nod. Is without a doubt an upside to playing the Mystic Sanctuary. The ability to use that graveyard is even more of a resource to potentially get free counter spells thanks to your Counterbalance. And you really just got to hold on with this type of deck as True Name eventually will get there. So five more turns is what Tony's looking to do. And Pyle's mana base may have to face down another Wasteland. Basic Forest. And Oko can't directly answer True Name Nemesis, but it can start making food, uh, which at the cost of two mana a turn will allow you to gain a whole lot of life. Ooh, Plague Engineer. This card is absolutely devastating. Once it touches the battlefield, that pestilence spreads. You can remove it after, but it doesn't do you a ton of good once your true name nemesis is in the graveyard. Plague Engineer, one of the stronger printings in the last year, and we've had a lot of them. Lightning Bolt clears. Plague Engineer. And now Snapcaster into Ponder. Sees two lands and a Lightning Bolt. That is likely not good enough. Tony agrees. Kind of get that out of there. He's got 
more than enough lands here. You can be hard casting Force of Will. Ponder, Counterbalance, Triggers, shows a Pithing Needle. These Pithing Needles, a uh, Pithing Needle likely to come down and shut off the Astrolabes. That is the obvious play. We'll see if Tony makes it or if he's going to be more cautious and try and prevent a card like Oko from taking over. Oh, he went through the effort of writing it down, but I don't believe I can make that out. Let me know in the comments if it looks differently to you. It looks a little blown out for me. Got a Wasteland, Pyroblast, and a blue card. Looks like Force of Will. Snapcaster. Flips shows a Prismatic Vista. And now Abrupt Decay is able to clear Counterbalance. And Snapcaster is squaring off. Another counterbalance comes down. But Tony finds himself in the awkward position of actually being behind on board. And now this Jace, we flip a Spell Pierce and then Pyroblast the Jace, which would have definitely been a problem barring a Pyroblast once he gets down and starts Fate Sealing. Uh, this game would essentially be over. Tony able to defend that game-winning play for only one mana. And Blue Red Delver really is one of the best Pyroblast decks. Just makes great use of it, making tokens with Young Pyromancer, flashing it back off of Dreadheart Arcanist and Snapcaster Mage, and also generally kind of funneling into a, a situation where counterspelling things is exactly what the deck wants to be doing. However, a Plague Engineer comes down, takes out Snapcaster, and now this Snapcaster that's going to be drawn for turn feels much worse. We've got a Brainstorm in response to a Lightning Bolt. And the Plague Engineer is killed. Another Snapcaster comes in. And Tony may actually need to now remove one of these Snapcasters. No, he's actually going to ponder. He is not going to settle for stabilizing. He wants to be able to pull ahead somehow. Another ponder. He continues to dig. A young Pyromancer or even a Dreadhorde Arcanist can do a lot of work here in preventing these Snapcasters from removing these final six points of life that Tony has. They've become an actual, an actual threat. Fatal Push takes out this Snapcaster unless there's one on top. I believe it's a two casting cost on top. I'm sorry, that's Tyrant Scorn. Not Abrupt Decay. This can be countered. Tyrant Scorn shows a young Pyromancer. And Pyromancer is going to be able to make a bunch of 1-1s here in all likelihood. So Young Pyromancer being cast, Pile fetching in response. So it does resolve. 
And now Leovold. And that is a big play right there. That's going to severely hinder the utility of Tony's cantrips if he has any. Another young Pyromancer. Angarth's Rampage. And this is not likely to do a ton of good as this Daze can actually create a pair of 1-1s. One Mystic Sanctuary comes back. This is an exciting finale to this game. Mystic Sanctuary can find an answer in that graveyard for Leovold. There's the Pyroblast. He's got to pass the turn. Oko comes down, turns an Astrolabe into a 3-3, and it turns sideways. Snapcaster and a Elemental Exchange. Pile could... Potentially protect the 3 3 with some removal. Though he lets it go. It's a two for one either way. Try not to be too greedy, perhaps. The removal would be better spent on these young pyromancers. If he had removal, I think he would have to have taken out a pyroman. Leovold. Not chosen. The Pyroblast takes out the Oko. Astrolabe draws. This is a very tense end state. Young Pyromancers can make an awful lot of guys. Leovold swinging, signaling that Pile probably has another one in hand. Let's see what type of block happens here. Tony not looking to get blown out. Trades a single 1-1 one, one to keep 3 life. It's possible that Pyle has some removal in hand. And could have killed one of those tokens. Killing all 3 of them with the Leovold. A Tarmogoyf now, and that is a gigantic play. We've got a Daze being used to return Mystic Sanctuary. Creating a couple of tokens. Magmatic Sinkhole. It's going to be targeting the Leovold. He draws a card and Leovold bites the dust. And now Magmatic Sinkhole put back on top, though that won't be enough to take down a Tarmogoyf. Brainstorm for Pile. This is just at the edge of your seat magic. This could go either way at any point that Leovold was really holding things down. And here's another one. And a Goyf swings. Tony's just going to single block it. Magmatic sinkhole. And now we're in turns. So Tony's going to be turn number one. Figuring out how large the goif is. 
he is huge. Magmatic Sinkle getting those counterbalances out of the graveyard. Preventing Goy from being even larger. The only thing we haven't seen in the bin so far is a tribal card, which is not going to be present in any of these lists. And Leovold again taken out with Magmatic Sinkhole. And we've got Snapcaster in response to this attack. And he's going to grab a Fatal Push. Push takes out a Young Pyromancer. Looks like five tokens incoming. That would leave both players in range of an Alpha Strike. A unblocked attack will be lethal from either of these players. So combat will be forced. Pondered keeps Brainstorm. Now a Plague Engineer would actually just end this. I believe he's already seen two this game. Swinging all out. Looks like a couple of chump blocks going on here. Tony may be happy to take four damage for the ability to crack back. And a lightning bolt finishes it. What a nail biter. So Pyle able to get him within bolt range. Tony had options, did not read Pyle for having the bolt. And Pyle takes down. Just a fantastic match uh, between two of the region's best. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.